Hello, Ghost Hunters. Ghost Watchers is the newest ghost hunting game. Stay tuned to see if this game is for you. Let me start by saying that we've seen a lot of ghost hunting type games since the release of Phasmophobia. Most of these games haven't really been competitors for Phasmophobia. While I'm all for developers making similar games, I strongly feel that these games should be better or different enough to provide a unique experience for the players. I also want to point out that since these games are coming to the market a lot later than Phasmophobia, I tend to give them the benefit of the doubt that there will be future development and growth for the game. So having said that, let's start with, does this game actually work? It's sad that this is the first category I have to address before continuing a review. So many past games were barely functioning upon release, so here we are. Ghost Watchers passed many of my personal criteria for this. First, it had no issues with my super ultra widescreen resolution. This is an easy fix, but a lot of games seem to overlook it. Second, it included inverted Y axis, which if you've watched my past reviews, failure to include this is a huge pet peeve of mine. And third, going into the game without any prior knowledge of gameplay wasn't difficult or impossible, and I didn't feel lost. My first attempt at the game, of course, ended in death, but at least I got a chance to look around and experience some that the game has to offer. So in essence, this game surpassed all of my personal expectations for my initial experience. So the game at least meets the basic requirements for me to ask the rest of my crew to try it out. So let's talk about what I liked in the game. First, all of these basic tools come included with your ghost hunt. Some of these are protection items and some are for determining your ghost. If you've played other ghost hunting games, then you probably feel confident with some of these, but certainly more lost with others. Like what's this thing do? So my suggestion for new players is to make sure you do the training first. Going in without this will likely make you feel more lost and confused. Second, your journal or guide can be very useful on the fly. This is great when you're confused about what a certain tool does and will help you in your ghost hunting. Probably one of my favorite things about this game was that the ghosts were actually scary. Their movements were more fluid and felt more lifelike, or maybe I should say more deadlike, than in other games I've played. I'm looking at you, Phasmophobia. Step up your game already. The slowing of players and the whispering voices definitely added to the environment and made players feel more panicked. I personally enjoyed the ghost objects inside the location which the ghost can and does interact with. The mirror that shows the ghost location is both disorienting and creepy. The ghost pulling players away from the group is both a frightening experience for the players observing and for the players being dragged away. There are many tools to help you protect yourself from the ghost, so carrying one of these with you at all times feels necessary. Other tools are placeable and provide some protection from the ghost, something I personally love about this game. Discovering your ghost type requires very different observations than required in other games, so it makes your experience more unique. I especially loved how much detail is included in each map. The environments provide a lot of ambiance and feel more real than where most games of this type are upon release. The objectives are unique and provide a clear way to earn money in the game. Overall, this game had a lot of positives right from the very beginning. But no new indie game is going to check all of the boxes. So what were some of the things I felt needed more work? First, the field of view felt like it needed some adjustment. While this is fine as is, it definitely could be better. For anyone prone to motion sickness, this game skirts that line between being just a tad too close and just about right. Second, there are only three maps. To be fair, it is early access and it is an indie game developer. So three well-designed maps with a lot of thought and assets to provide a more realistic feel to the environment isn't bad but it's definitely not going to be enough for the long term. So let's hope that new maps are on the horizon. Speaking of maps, if you are a game developer, please resist the urge to use this farmhouse as a map in your game. This is the third time I personally have seen this map pop up in a horror game. And for me, well, it kind of lost its scary feeling a long time ago. Variety is your friend and doing a bit of research to see that other ghost hunting games have already used this exact house should have been part of the development and planning. I will say though that this house is definitely better in this game than the other two. Moving on to items, it appears that you do not keep your gear from one game to the next, or at least I didn't. Despite surviving the very next game, my expensive gear was nowhere to be found. 
I'm guessing this is something that will change in the future as it certainly does not encourage players to earn more cash for more gear if that gear simply disappears. Some of the evidence in the game was difficult to determine, like these footprints that didn't quite fit in any of the categories. There also appears to be some kind of lag between leaving your ghost hunting location and returning to the lobby. Game after game, we found ourselves having to reset up lobbies as this part of the game definitely doesn't feel finished. The voice communication in the game seemed spotty from one game to the next. Sometimes we could hear each other, and sometimes we couldn't. Because of this, using something like Discord in place of in-game communication felt necessary. And finally, some of the objectives are unique, but also frustrating. For example, the light all the candles in the location objective felt very unique. But upon entering the school and many, many sweeps of the location, we were obviously not seeing all the candles. There's no indication to how many, and they're not easy to spot. So overall, this unique objective felt more tedious than fun. One thing that ghost hunters should remember when playing this game is that it is not simply just discovering your ghost type. That is only part of the game, and after you have done so, you must figure out how to weaken your ghost so you can then capture it. So is this game worth playing? That's the real question, and likely why you're watching this video. I will say the developers have clearly indicated that this is a work in progress. They've requested feedback and suggestions from players. It is an indie game, and it is early access, so expecting a perfect polished game right out the door is unrealistic. This game comes in around $15, which is about where most multiplayer ghost hunting indie games are. Is this game going to go on to be huge and perfectly polished with loads of maps to play? Well, I can't say for certain, and I somehow don't think that it will, but will it get better from its current state? I think yes. Based on the state of the game now, was it worth the $15? For me, yes. I think for most of you, it will also be enjoyable. You may not sink hundreds of hours into the game, but I think you'll get your money's worth. Ghost Watchers bring some variety, unique experiences, and challenges to the table if you're looking at mixing things up a bit. If you've tried Ghost Watchers, tell me what you thought about the game in the comments below. Did you find things enjoyable that I didn't mention, or were there things that you felt frustrated with that I failed to include? If you haven't tried Ghost Watchers yet, do you plan on giving the game a try? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and as always, happy hunting.